welcome to One on One at the GTEC Stadium with me, Nick Gray. Today we'll be one on one with three of Brentford's key players, delving into the mindset behind their success. Ivan Tony, big dog, king of the GTEC Stadium. Thanks for doing our little interview today. Can you tell me what's your earliest childhood memory? What's the first thing you remember in your life? Um, just playing out the front because where where my mum. Well, still lives right out the front is a big park. Yeah. And like all the older kids used to play out the front there. They all just pile yeah. out and kick a football and then just like 20 the older lot just playing football and these times I was proper young, like around eight. So you played with the big boys then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she used to get kicked around, bullied and these kind of things. So that was Northampton, right? Yeah, Northampton, yeah, East Hill Park. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it all started on the park outside your house. Pretty and much, like, yeah. Playing with the big boys got you uh yeah, literally, uh, there would be times I wouldn't even touch the ball because <laughs> they just bully, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. bully off it. But I think, for, obviously, from young, playing with older, it, it just kinda, builds you up. Yeah, it kind of builds you up quicker than others, I'd say. Yeah, fair enough. And did you, even then, did you think, oh, I'm good at football, like, I can do this, this is my thing? Or do you just play and the big kids? Yeah, pretty much I just play, but then you kind of get a little inkling that, like when you pick the teams, everyone's picking you like first or yeah. second or these kind of Even things. Even when you were younger. Even when you're, you're younger. So it's kind of like, if, you, okay. if you're getting picked first or second, then you're kind of one of the best players. Yeah. So then I think like the older lot was just saying, you're smart sisters and my parents, like, you, 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 yeah, he's good, he can play. Yeah. So you didn't feel special then? You just judged from other people? You didn't think, I can do this? Yeah, yeah, you just, you're just enjoying it. I think that that's such a young age, you don't really think nothing like that. You, and think, you don't know what other people feel. Yeah, so. you think stay out, play as long as you can, because if you go in to get a drink, nine times out of ten, you're not allowed back out. So. <laughs> yeah, your mum wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, so you have to stay if you, out. If you go in for a drink, then that's it, you're in. Right. You're in, so. So straight after school, you're in. Stay out until it's dark, the lights, lights on, then you go in. So if we go forward now, tell me about when you, you first started thinking about football could be my life, I could be a professional. What, <clears> what was that like? I think it was um, year 10. Obviously, I, I want to be out and active, uh, like in the lessons in school. I, I was all right at maths, I was all right at English, these kind of things, but then I still wanted to be out doing things and playing football. Were you creative so, at school? Like, did you have a creative bit? Yeah, I feel like I did. I feel like, and I had a big personality at, at school as well, at, at such a young age, so it was kind of like, help others, be around others, just the, the like the passing in the room to make things happen, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So and you still see that on the pitch. It's I like, try to. I try to. Yeah. I think I get on everyone's nerves screaming at them. But <laughs> no, I think the opposite. Like strikers are often quite insular. Like they want to get the ball and shoot, whereas you seem only too happy to make the most of the other strikers and and really get them into the game. And you're the first one to congratulate them. I think it means a lot coming from you as well to them. Yeah, and most importantly, I want to win. I don't care how I do it, I want to win. I so pick your, team, but pick yeah. your teammates up as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. even in training, like, we all banter around, but then I have a, I'm angry when we lose, like, little things. Well, even five aside. Even five aside, little competition with teams, you're racing, these kind of things. But I want to win by all means, and like you said, on the pitch, I try to do that, help others. Yeah. Sometimes they're not having the best game, but if I can do the extra bit to help them out and... It's usually with a smile and an arm around them. I very rarely see you, like, angry with your team. Like, Brian, probably best example, like, with him, when he misses his opportunities, he gets angry with himself and kicks himself and it's like, you missed now, you can't change it. Yeah. You've got to be ready for the next opportunity that and comes. And you're there to take the shot and he yeah, gets yeah. enough goals, doesn't he? So how does it feel when you've got, like, 20,000 people just hanging on every touch and everything? Yeah, it feels good. Obviously, it's a confidence booster as well. Um, not just myself, I think every player thrives off that. The downside when it's not going so well. <laughs> quite just cold as Yeah, around. it is, it is. And like at, at the moment, in results wise, for, for, for us, it's a tough place, but we're all mentally strong and know that we're more than capable of being back to where we should be and uh, we, we, we're sure it, it will turn around. Yeah, and there's, there's not much astray. You know, you look at the on team performance this year from last year, there's a few key people out. But the ones that have come in, they've done surprisingly well. It's, it's fine margins, isn't it? Yeah, and, and everybody knows they're going to play a part. Whether, whether they wasn't 
play in the first 10 games of the season. It's most of them are in, in the mix now and they're needed, so it's kind of like when your opportunity arises, you have to take it. Yeah, and, take it, do your best, yeah, and shift it. And make sure the team's, team's good because everybody wants to be in the Premier League and stay in the Premier League. And, you know, yeah, it is the toughest league in the world. That's where you want to be, but it's savage, like yeah. one mistake. And people are very, people. very, yeah. That's what makes it fun, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And you want to you want to play the best and uh, compete against the best and put up a fight, and that's what we're trying to do. I remember years ago watching Zinazine Zidane, and the ball was flying towards him, <clears throat> and he was like, he was fainting which way to throw the defender. The ball hadn't even landed yet. So he sent the defender the wrong way and then this perfect touch passed him. It's like he could see the future. And if you don't mind me saying, I can see that in you too. It's like you're <laughs> always looking for that, a, yeah. that, that You're always looking for a touch. Like your brain works on a different level to other players. It's like you'll play it off your bum, you'll back heel it. You're always thinking. And is that creativity just something that comes? Do you understand you can see things before other players? Yeah, I like to I like to try and put myself one step ahead of others. Like, um, I, and I always think if you do the right things, then nine times out of 10, it'll, it'll, it'll pay off. Like, I think the one you made off the, off the bum, I think if it, if I'd done that, whistle was in, I think I was against Liverpool or someone. But just little moves like that, I think if you do the right thing, then you got a chance of it, it pulling off, but. And it's like you're seeing two steps ahead all the time, it feels like. Yeah, and it's just like a confidence thing as well. Yeah. Like you just, you have just... you always had that because the other thing that stands out is like some players they'll go through stages of in the game there's two or three key moments that can either go your way or not and you always seem to strike the ball well nobody scores every goal mm. but you always seem when that key moment comes you always seem to have a belief and a calmness about it is that something that's always been with you or is that practice or yeah I've always been quite chilled and uh, just, just do do things my way I feel like that was, that's what makes me happy, doing things my way. If it pays off, it pays off. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The 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 fact that I've done it my way makes me happy anyway. So it's kind of like that one. You just got to be confident in in doing it. If you want to do just something, make good contact and hope. You know, yeah. it's like if you do that, you've done your bit. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. My favorite ever goal was this one down here where um, you you just chipped uh, the Leeds one. Was it Leeds? Someone it... dispossessed the keeper. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah, closed yeah, yeah. and you just dinked it. And yeah, it's yeah. just beautiful. It's like my favourite ever goal I've ever seen. Yes, yeah, like one of them, one of them. I've everybody got... was running straight for it and you just, you were just calm and you just dinked it and you could just see it sailing over it. Yeah, I remember that. everyone screaming shoot. I took about four extra touches, I think. There was a few groans when I was taking touch after touch at then. But you're calm. It's not like you were panicking. Yeah, you're just yeah. like, well, we'll get the thing. They all came out and just dinked over the top. Yeah. Beautiful. I remember that one. When the, when the team's struggling or someone's just got a goal with the first chance of the game, what, how do you change your approach to football? Or don't you? I think on the pitch, it's just um, in terms of putting a strong tackle in or making a, a run to let everyone know we're just still to in it. The yeah, just yeah, like pretty much things like that, and just still have a uh, positive frame of mind, like whether it's pressing the keeper or winning the header or just little things. Let everyone know. Right, we're still fighting yeah. for this. Whereas if I'm just holding off and letting them pass and they're building into getting more, it's kind of like we're accepting defeat early doors. So you do something to change the momentum? Yeah, or you just t tell someone to do some of these kind of things. And off the pitch, it's kind of like, OK, we lose the game, but we can't be sulking throughout the whole week, otherwise we're in going to... Yeah. If you got out of yeah, the first yeah. half, go and win the second one. You can't be sulking regardless of what happens. And you've got to be ready for the next opportunity, the next game, or these kind of things. Like we've been losing the last few games that we drew the other day, but you still got to be happy around the, around the training ground. And if everyone's put their shift in, they've done <clears> the best, <throat> it's the best league in the world. You're going to lose however good you are. Mm. It's, it's, it's as long as you all feel like you did it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah everyone knows you're going to lose some games sooner or, uh, or later, but you just got to keep fighting, keep keep thinking positive, and like I said, things things will change. The other interesting thing is that for professional footballers, there's like, although it's a team, a lot of them, especially when they get to the tail end of their careers, I think they become aware that even their teammates are their competitors for a place in the squad or whatever. You don't seem to feel that. 
he's, is that something you've been aware of that some players are more likely to sort of look after themselves but you need a team of people that will just say right we're stronger together than if we play as individuals um, definitely in the past the teams I've been at before I've seen that with the older, older ones that just make as much money as they can because they're coming to the end of their career they really care about Others just want to be scoring and these kind of things. But no, I don't see that in this club. No, it seems it. very together. Like everybody knows, like, if like Neil didn't start the other day, he's still boosting everyone on. He's, he's screaming at everyone to make sure we're doing well. Where he could have easily, because he scored at West Ham, then he's not signing next game, he could have easily started sulking and yeah. been like, all right, I'm not helping the team. So just little things like that. Everyone's together, regardless if you're playing or you're not playing. Uh, that's and that's key because it's not. A team of individuals, and it's a good example, Neil, because like obviously he played well for Bees, he played well for Brighton, had a nightmare at Everton. Yeah. Like, is that? Do you think that's the way some teams play? Don't suit, or just a player gets his head down and can't get a break? What do you think causes those streaks? Because Neil's come here and he looks at home again very quickly. I think obviously it's a club Neil knows very well. Uh, I don't know Everton. I don't know what went on with Neil at Everton, but I feel like sometimes a striker just wants to be loved and wanted. Uh, whether he was loved or wanted at Everton is a different story. But here he definitely is, and you can see he's playing well, scoring goals and tormenting defenders. Yeah, and it's interesting because psychology on the pitch is big for you. I can see what's going on. You're working the defenders. I don't know if you talk to them. Do you talk to the defenders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, tell me yeah. some of the things. Because <laughs> you're always trying to get them. I'm sarcastic most times, like... <laughs> if a defender takes a bad touch and goes out for a throw and I was like, oh, good touch, good touch. <laughs> yeah. Things like this. So if he takes, if he does a long pass, I was like, I'll say, oh, good pass. He should have controlled that. Where really it went off the pitch, so no one could have controlled it. <laughs> and your banter's at quite a sophisticated level. Neil just winds them up, doesn't he? he yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, the pairing of us has got kind of a bad name for ourselves, but I think Neil's took over me. <laughs> what, in, uh, in winding up the opposition. Yeah, yeah, I think the fans get onto. They used to get onto me all the time, but I think they're getting onto him now, so it's, it's kind of taking, taking, yeah, taking off me. But the psychology at every level, isn't it? It's like your own touches, your own game, what you saw to them about. Yeah, even with penalties as well. Obviously, keepers try and come out and do their thing, and defenders try to talk to you and these kind of things. How did you? What made you decide on that routine? Was that just you fancied that's your? the best percentage way of scoring. You just wait for the keeper. Yeah. It's calm as anything, but it frightens me every day. <laughs> yeah, my family too, you're not the only one. I think my mum, every time we get a penalty, she runs inside and don't watch it. So. But I think it's just like, with a new rule as well, you have to stay on your line. As close as I am to the ball, by the time I've kicked it, it should already go past the keeper. And what's Thomas like to work with? Yeah, he's good. I had this chat the other day, actually, with a, with a friend of mine. It was just. Is is like one of your friends. He is a down to earth person, and like he actually is very genuine. And like even the players that don't play still love him, yeah. or and the people that don't get picked are still still understand what he's trying to do and, and and like him and like him as a person. So, so he's more of an inspiration than anything about this. Time. Yeah, and he's not just like obviously he's got the manager side where you have to stop and listen to him and these kind of things. But you can banter with him. You can talk to him about anything. I feel personally anyway. That's good, so it's approachable, but clear. Yeah. And it, it felt like through this season, Brentford have tried to change their approach a little bit, like have more possession. But when you have more possession, there's, you're obviously got a little bit of vulnerability. Is Would that be accurate or do you think that's not true, that Brentford have gone for more possession? That's maybe why it's been more difficult defending. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you're going to make mistakes when you have the ball because you have the ball to make mistakes. But I feel like our mistakes haven't really come from losing possession in low blocks. It's come from our own doing this, which is like crosses or these kind of things. But yeah, I feel like our style of play has not really changed in a massive way. No, it we, doesn't. We still, yeah, I feel, I feel like the season before, we still wanted to play with the ball in some games. Okay, you got a setup for kind of counter attacks, or it depends who you're playing against. Yeah. But yeah, we obviously we want to try and play with the ball and try and cut out the mistakes and build our way up from the back. Last season, a lot of commentators made the most of the fact that when Brentford go goal up, end off, they don't lose leads, and the commentators kind of drilled that in and everything. 
and this year it's been the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do you think sometimes for a team that can actually, because journalists do it on purpose, they praise and praise and praise, and then they'll rip yeah, it from under. Yeah, that's journalists. And it, it is, unfortunately. But do you think that's got to the team sometimes when they think, oh, don't lose the lead, don't lose the lead, and then obviously <coughs> you get a bit tighter? No, I think it's just a bit. Coincidence, obviously, we, we got we, you can lose the lead, it's normal. You can go in front and lose it, lose the lead. Everybody knows one nil, two nil is not the best leads to have because <laughs> one game changes one momentum game. and it changes everything. But I think it's just, yeah, we was a lot more streetwise the seasons before, whereas now we're a bit naive sometimes when we go one in front, whether it's kind of like keep attacking, and yeah, yeah, keep attacking, right. play for another goal, waste time a bit, or just be a bit clever about things. But yeah, we haven't really done that too well this season and it's cost us, I think, around about 26, 27 points. So it's something we need to change around and yeah, we, we work on it and we know what to do when we do go in front. But obviously other teams are going to keep pressing us when we we're in front and they want to change it. So it's, it's tough. It's the best league in the world, yeah. you know? It's not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's far from it's easy. Not. Far from easy. Yeah. How is your approach Change from when you first walked out on the pitch to now, what would you say that the actual period of being a professional footballer has changed your approach to football or what have you developed or what you feel you've learned and added along the way? I think um, as a striker in the game, you want to be scoring goals. Like Now if I come off the pitch and I haven't scored, I'm still upset inside, but as long as we win, that's the main thing, I'm happy. But Strikers, you you, always, you can ask every striker, they want to score goals. Yeah. That's their job. And if I, if I come off the pitch, I haven't scored or I haven't contributed to a goal, then I haven't done my job. <laughs>